Question 35. Why is so much of the Muslim world underdeveloped? No one can deny that the Muslim world has been in decline for several centuries, the causes of which go back into history. In the Muslim nation's early stages, wealth, centers of learning, and public works were abundant. But affluence, excessive concern with worldly life, and the spread of corruption eventually weakened religious consciousness. The inevitable result of these human failures was an ebb in conversions to Islam and territorial expansion, losses sustained in East Asia and Europe, the ascension of Western power and influence, and a change from an ascendant to a defensive posture. The present backwardness of most Muslim societies, their political degradation, and their people's suffering, in spite of their human and material resources, and of Islam's noble values and principles, is the unfortunate reality of the present day. The calamities that befell the Muslim world after the period of its early expansion, eventually leading to the fall of the caliphate, cannot be attributed to Islamic thought or even entirely to errors in political leadership. The prophetic period and that of the early caliphs which followed presented the best examples for all succeeding generations. However, the rapid influx of new peoples and nations into the community of Islam before they were properly educated as to Islamic objectives and values resulted in a later political leadership that never developed and matured as it should have. The Islamic vision became obscured and its spirit reduced to mere form, empty words, and a heritage venerated, but seriously misunderstood by later generations. The natural trend of the Islamic legal system to expand was arrested, and the vital physical sciences, economics, sociology, and political thought all essential aspects of previous development were neglected. At the same time, the Muslim world was becoming increasingly weak and vulnerable. Europe was beginning to benefit from the achievements of Islamic scholarship and assert itself. The fact that most Muslim regions of the world were then conquered, dominated, and exploited by Western colonial powers for some time is not an excuse that is condoned by Islam. Rather, it was the natural outcome of the widespread neglect and failure by Muslims to conscientiously and comprehensively adhere to the teachings of their religion. The importance of obtaining knowledge and working conscientiously with determination was made clear by the Prophet of Islam. Muslims are taught that because man has been given a certain amount of free will, it must be exercised properly in accordance with Islamic teachings to earn approval of the Creator. This in itself is motivation for Muslims to be the most knowledgeable and productive people possible. If Muslim societies today are not meeting their potential, it is surely not due to Islam. Rather, it is from their ignorance of the religion and failure to apply and practice it.